Welcome to episode one of the Bombad Cast. This one is titled Thank the Makers. It is me, Scotty Jarrow, and I am here with my boy, the Cannon Junkie, Jerry. What's up, Jerry? Not much, Scotty. How you doing, buddy? Dude, I'm I'm feeling it, man. I actually I'll give you some updates in a second, but I got okay. my Star Wars Celebration tickets, man. So I'm, oh. I'm really feeling it. Snap, man. That's awesome. That is so awesome. All right, so <laughs> We we've got we've got so much going on today. We're gonna have a special guest to tune in later. But yeah, um, um, Jerry, what's been up with you, man? You got anything big going on in your life right now? Uh, not too much. Just uh, man, a lot of a lot of boring uh, grown up stuff. You know, like you know, trying to make money and yeah, uh, yeah. you know, li- live the life, uh, raise a padawan, and things <laughs> like that. So uh, the the force is still strong with her. Uh, so we're, we're good in that department and everything, but, but not much besides that. I wasn't able to get, see, that's the thing. You, I'm so glad you got your tickets. Um, don't, I, I don't cry for me, uh, Star Wars Twitter, but I did not get tickets. I wasn't able to get them this Friday. I just couldn't work it out. So we're, I'm going to have to try my best, uh, to, to pull a ray and go out into the <laughs> and scavenge some from inside a Star Wars water tank. So... Wish me luck. Wish me I, luck because I, I really want to go. Thank you. I, that means so much. Well, you know, funny you said that. I saw you and John Hoey going back and forth on Twitter talking about how when's the best time to get them back. And, you know, the best part is, you know, not a, a lot of people are going to be, you know, scalpers. So they're going to buy it and they're going to sell it for higher prices. Right. But luckily, luckily, there'll people be people that don't go and end up canceling their subscriptions and their purchases for it. So you'll end up getting it back at the, the best cost efficient price. So I if even if you can't get them now, y'all, everyone listening, um, this is not just for Jerry, but if you can't get them <laughs> now. Um, you can 100% get them later, okay? Yes. And also, same with the hotels. People end up canceling that all the time. We have a lot of friends that we met from Celebration end up being able to get better rooms because someone canceled, right? Right. Well, that was my – I got my – That was you. Like a week before. Exactly. I had like this one that was four miles away from the convention center. Mm-hmm. I have to like pay for an Uber or, or try to catch the shuttle. Yeah. And I found one that was uh, – just a few blocks away. It was it was a That's awesome. good walk. Um, it was probably like a, not quite a mile, but but close to it. But so it was a nice morning walk. You know, I got to the convention center. The wind did my hair for me uh, because I was afraid my hat was going to blow off. You know, crossing the overpass. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but besides that, it was great. Um, so yeah, seriously. And and if you are like me and you are going to uh, become a scavenger and try to scavenge a ticket beforehand. <laughs> Uh, the I believe the website and I've got it saved on my phone now is uh, uh, Light L Y T E and it is official. You can you can go to the celebration website and hit a link that will take you there. So that's awesome. Trust any other offers or anything like that. Seriously, people uh, are relentless and they, uh, honestly, I feel like they should they maybe uh, Repop should in the future try to uh, tamp down efforts. Or I agree. Stamp try to stamp some of that out because I mean. People were posting things on. Did you see those people posting the the people on eBay like who were trying to sell their four day? T- yeah, yeah, and and, it's sad. and that's the thing. It it is a shame, but uh, at the same time, it's like it's it it's it sucks and it's clever. It's a lot. I, I don't condone it, but right. But if but people make money doing that, you know. Yeah. And, oh, and, totally. And it, it's it. There's one way of handling things, and hopefully, Rip Hop will do it different. But um. Jerry, I want to talk about something, man. Oh, well, lay it on me there, Mr. Scatty. Dude, there was so much positive and wonderful responses to our very first episode. And it was oh gosh, so loosely were. done. I'm not going to yes. lie, y'all. This episode's got some good structure. We're really excited. We got some little sound segments and stuff we're going to throw in here later. I, I really am so excited. This is, the to me, 
our first like real like full on we're gonna give you the best we got episode instead of just talking about what we're gonna do. Now we are literally doing it. This uh, is but, that's why um, this is episode one and that was episode zero. Exactly, exactly. This is the first one. This is the official. Thank the makers is the title of this one. But um, but Jerry, how did you feel about everything, man? I mean, it has been nonstop for the past week. I'm, I'm shocked. I really am shocked. I, Scotty, man, I was. Honestly, I was quite blown away. Um, I knew that we had a lot of people who followed us and who we talked with. Yeah. And so I would consider I would consider you all friends. You're all friends here at Bob. Totally. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, <clears throat> I'm getting choked up. Um, <laughs> and uh, just thinking about it. Oh, tear to my eye. Um, <clears throat> uh, hack in my lung. Okay. Uh, so. It was just so beautiful, like, and so amazing, like, the love that was poured out when we just announced we were doing a podcast. Yes. But I don't know. I don't know what you want to build up to, if you want to build up to who who said things about us. But we even had, like, some pretty major uh, people in the podcasting, the Star Wars podcasting world. Um, totally. Talking about it, which which was exciting. It was it was awesome. I'm not just a canon junkie. I'm a podcast junkie, too. Yes. So... Anyway, I, I don't know. T- tell Scott. What okay, so with you. So I mean, this entire week has been absolute experience from celebration tickets to this. And and if I want to, you know, I guess I'm going to explain a little bit more about why it was so good and who really kind of you know really took us under their wings in their own weird way. I mean, to me, any retweet means a lot. And we got a lot of yes. comments and and posts from retweets and and people. A lot of people followed us from there. And I'll, I'm gonna read a little bit of the people that actually ended up really reaching out. So, I believe it was last Sunday or last Monday, uh, or even Tuesday. I actually don't remember the exact date. I put on Twitter, "Oh, um, we got a hundred followers. This is excellent. You know, whatever." In in, right. in a Jar Jar way, um, <laughs> a bomb we, bad followers. We're so excited. Yes, that was it. <laughs> and. I'll read the people that end up reaching out and like really retweeting it and liking it and and people that we know personally and people that yes. we met at celebration people we haven't actually so we got a uh, our people resistance broadcast TRB they brought us together um, we got Alex from Star Wars Explained uh, my man he's he's my Gosh. dude and, okay. and, and he was nice enough to retweet it and and I, I don't know it was, it was awesome dude well that, look, may I just may I just uh, uh, dote upon you if you mm-hmm. yeah um, <laughs> for first of all. Before I even knew what the tweet said, I got a notification. I'm I, I work at a factory, guys. Okay, mm-hmm. I was on the line, and I my phone's out beside me because that's just the kind of factory I work at. And uh, <laughs> I see the notification. It says Star Wars Explained mentioned you in a podcast. I turned into like that that gif from Sanford and Son, like you know, come on Elizabeth, like stumbling around. Like I think that was the gif I sent you because yes. holy crap, that was, that was insane. That was wild. That was that actually was, pretty. That was intense. And then when I and, looked and saw what it actually was, I was like, holy cow, this is this is the real deal. Yeah, totally. Not to, and, uh, I mean, Alex is such a great guy. I don't want to like build it, you know, because I know he would just say, "I'm just a guy, guys." Yeah, us. <laughs> uh, Alex, your legend. I mean, w- he was. He, uh, yeah, go ahead. He he was. No, no, no. Doting upon you, which was awesome. It, it was it was great because I had I've hung out with Alex like a, maybe like four or five times and like That's we've it. always That's talked awesome. and stuff and. And for him to, you know, I, I was, this is a weird thing to say, but he was one of the first Star Wars YouTubers I ever watched, like right. really ever watched in, in spring of 2016. It was my, it was my fourth, uh, I guess, semester of, of college and Star Wars Minute was just a new thing to me. And I would literally sit there and watch it. Every video, I sat there one night and watched maybe an hour's worth of videos, and they were short videos at the time. Right. Now he does these beautiful, extensive. So if you all haven't listened to Star Wars Explained, um, go to him. And uh, we also got a retweet from from Jason Ward as well from Making oh Star goodness. Wars. And he was one of the first websites I followed, like really followed. And, and I would go there for leaks and stuff. And right. I met him at Celebration, and he was really nice too. And, and I reached out to him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I remember us talking about that. So yeah. it's cool to see this come into existence with him. But, well, that's, uh, so, that's so crazy because, like, uh, you know, I actually I didn't get to meet him at Celebration, but I was like this close, and you all can't see it, but I'm, I've got my fingers really close together. <laughs> <laughs> How close I was! Um, I was this close to going to the Episode Nine panel with him, and probably like Randy Lajudice. Wow! Um, wow! I did not know that. Well, because he like had said, "Hey, if you guys want to get in on our little uh, 
panel lottery. We can all we're trying to get a group together, and uh, you know, we mess we private message back and forth for a little bit. That's awesome. It just didn't work out, and I was yeah. Oh, okay, well maybe I'll see you. I'll see you around. But seriously, no, no, man. Uh, Jason Ward is like the OG from like back in the yes. days, man. Like that's legit. That man has been just grinding the Star Wars. Yeah. Like out I, and. Forever. Speaking of speaking of more people that that do the same thing, like Pete uh, Fletzer, even yes. though I, I I he did not post or tweet anything, but we went back and forth on Twitter for a little while and uh, through direct message, and he's awesome. I did not realize he wrote for Star Wars Insider. I did not realize he did all that he did with Lucasfilm. So that was awesome. Talk to him. Um, Course not Radio Underground, a, right? Yes. Another one right there. Another good one right there. If y'all haven't listened to it already, I, I think you should. We were featured before any of this actually even started, and um, it's I don't know the name of the episode exactly. I think it's with the um, Bombad cast. Yeah, it's the with one, the Bombad cast. The one, the one, the one with, the with the Bombad cast. Yes, yeah. go listen to that. One. It's a great episode. Um, <laughs> and then the like best that. part is. We had other people that we know personally come out and reach to us. Um, we got Micah. Um, he's a big guy in the Star Wars and to the Resistance, Resistance broadcast. I see him a lot on there. He reached out at Star Wars Time, so give him a follow. We got Rule Farm Boy, which you will hear from oh, later. Yes. He reached out too. Um, Rule Farm even, Boy. Yeah, even Steel Saunders liked it, oh. and I, I don't know if he retweeted it. He's a real he, nice guy. He with did. Steel Wars. He, um, he did retweet one of our tweets because that that I about fell out of my chair there too. So, <laughs> so awesome, so it's awesome. Crazy. And then um, my cousin Troy, he reached out. He's at, at at Elder Pug. He actually does really good Twitch streams of Pokemon games. So if y'all are in, if you're into that thing as well, he does Knights of the Old Republic. And I'm thinking about getting him on here soon. Um, we got Rick Villa Nueva, which is actually one of the first people to do a write-in for this podcast in the last episode at Cad Bane's Bounty. Um, we got Storm Duper from Faking Star Wars, who we've been in touch with about yes. doing a collaboration. Well, we've so, gotten uh, quite a few like solicitations yeah, for that. That's have. pretty awesome. It's and, great. And Just look around Star for us, guys. Wars. Yeah, no, totally. If and if you're listening right now and you've got a little channel you want us to be featured on or want us to come join, we we are more than happy to do that. Um, Faking Star Wars is pretty interesting. They have a little bit more of a themed podcast, so maybe uh, Jerry and I could put on our acting caps later and and <laughs> go and join like we used to do. Jerry and I are both um, even even in different, I guess, worlds. We were both into theater at one yes, point. So, yes. Yes. Um, so we got Todd. How do we say his last name? De De, De Grossi. Uh, Todd De Grossi. De, De Grossi. De, De Grossi. Just, just, just send us in a voice message and tell us how how we are. <laughs> in in slow mo, in slow mo. I think it's Degrassi because they were talking about this on on the Resistance Brad. Exactly, they did oh. on that episode. At Todd knows best. We got stars, Dexterius, Obi, Don Kenobi, our boy Don. Oh, Don uh, boring. He made the logo, y'all. Huge shout out. He made the Bombad Cast logo, and it took no time. He literally messaged me. Yes. And within ten minutes, he had the logo done. Oh, we are, and we are forever official. indebted. It's yes. the official one. Um, and we got Scott Gibson at Scott Gibby, our boy. We spent a lot of celebration with him. And uh, uh, Jerry did a lot. Jerry spent like maybe two whole days with Scott Gibby. So we're excited. <laughs> He's coming to celebration next time, too. So we talked about that in our private chat. Very nice. Um, uh, Carl Steyer, which is actually that he just revealed his name. Darth Hurricane's actual name is Carl. So Darth Hurricane did a, um, um, a really wonderful comment, and I'll actually end up reading his uh, write-up in a second. And then we had Sean Fabry, our boy Safari Ben. He, he reached out too, but um, Jerry, do me a favor if you can. Yes, um, sir. Um, what read, read what Darth Hurricane wrote up about our podcast, because I was elated, you know, getting any response was good, and we asked everyone for a response, but I did not expect such a well-written write-up. It's such like, a well-written write-up. Oh, yeah. Hey, we got so much love from so many people. It's just it, it, seriously staggering, but but Darth Hurricane himself, uh, Mr. Carl, uh, he, he wrote, just finished listening, and let me tell you, the podcast was great. I love the work you guys did on the format, uh, this is no knock on other podcasts. Uh, a little bit of, you know, uh, passive-aggressive shade you're throwing. A little bit. Or just a tad bit. Like, Come on, just Carl. Just, tad, just, just back, back it off a little bit. A little like, bit, no. <laughs> um, but I, I loved, uh, I loved, uh, excuse me, uh, there is, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, no <laughs> knock on other podcasts, but there are plenty that go over news and topic by topic. I love the just going off on a topic. I love the long form, essentially on one topic, and an in-depth take on things. I really can't say enough about how great this was and the energy and positivity there, how much po energy and positivity there was. 
I cannot wait for another episode and hope you guys keep this format. And let me tell you, Darth Hurricane, you inspired us, sir. Seriously. Seriously. we Very uh, much so. We tried to do a very loose format with that last one, and we're going to do the same with this one. It's got it's got a little bit more sections, but you'll you'll end up seeing where it goes. The discussion is a hundred percent loose. Absolutely, uh, nothing has been planned. We have a very loose write up on it. Um, but thank you for your reach out, Darth Hurricane, or as we can call you, Carl. Uh, we really really appreciate it. And anyone else that feels like they need to even be, you could be critical on us. Post it. We want to know. You know, that's yeah. what we're here for. We're gonna improve. We're gonna build on on everything that's stated. But um. And we actually, Jerry, I know you've listened to one of these. We actually got a, a voice recording in from a couple of fans about, about I can't believe I just said fans. I know, it's so like, surreal, that's, yeah. That's so weird. Um, well, we're we gotta, all fans, though. Right? We are. Yeah, that's true. It, that's, that's what I think people loved about our podcast they were saying is it feels like just a good conversation. Totally. Like you would have at Celebration. And that's just, I love that that's the energy we have. So. But it, we've got we've got fans of fans, and we are the fans of those fans as well. The fans because we are, inside we are fans. fans. It's it's we're, a whole fanception. We're <laughs> we're a turducken of fans. Maybe not. Let's not go that. Rewind that. Cut it out, and let's move on. So, all right. So here is a little audio recording we received from a a, a rural farm boy. I'm sorry, rural farm boy at a rural farm boy, and uh, he. Uh, you'll just see. I'll, I'll let you listen. All right. Here it is. I'll do Scotty and Jerry. This here's Anthony. You know me better than that Twitterverse. I'm a rural farm boy. Just want to welcome you to my playlist and welcome you, welcome you to Star Wars podcasting. And really glad that your show blowed up as big as it did. And I know it weren't nearly what Yins was inspecting. Well, it's going to keep getting bigger, and I hope you're ready for the ride because we're ready for the listen. And <laughs> Scotty, I gotta, I gotta give you a little poke in the ribs for a second there when you was giving a go at reading me, because as I do tend to do, I write as I speak. Um, and maybe if that give you. a bit of troubles because you tried to do it being Louisiana and maybe that didn't work too well reading Northern Appalachian and maybe if you need a hand with that again I can recommend you get Hawes Burkhart because he can read me just fine he can learn you how to do it so just know that I'm looking forward to many more shows from you in my playlist and give me reasons to send you another voicemail as the ends are recording, talking back and forth at one another on microphones, wondering if folks is listening. I'm letting you know, folks is definitely listening, and you've seen that in that Twitterverse. So let's see what you've come up with for your episode number one, as your first one was uh, episode zero. Looking forward to when Jins are going to show up on my playlist when you get it sorted which day of the week that might drop regular on. So till then, my Star Wars friends, may the force be with you. See you on the radio. Oh, so cool. I love it. <laughs> so cool. Dude, what is up, man? <laughs> if they, okay. Anthony, I know you, 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 Anthony, rural farm boy, buddy, you need to go out and like, talk up some like sports teams before they go out before the big game man because you were like seriously psyching me up you were hype you were hype oh my gosh like seriously Jeez. he was like it's it got bigger than you th- than you thought uh, yeah yeah definitely i oh, yeah. uh, got a, almost uh, 85 more followers in just like five days i know yeah, it's, it's it's so surreal <laughs> oh my god it's and and you know so staggering it is, and, and, and I did not mean to make fun of your incredible <laughs> accent. I'm being serious. I have honestly, I've, I've met a lot of people in my lifetime, but I've never met anyone that's extrapolation ever, ever. And to have that happen was, was to me, very cool, and, and I will never uh, disrespect your accent or your culture ever again because it was, I thought it was a ploy, but you are for real. You are a yeah. legit 
this is hundred percent legit. I mean, it's incredible. I I um I could really have warned appreciate you. you saying that. I could have warned you because I have heard his voicemails a few times before, but I I loved it. I wasn't like trying to let you go off, but I thought I thought it sounded good. But it's don't worry, Anthony. We are rural farm, but we are uh, uh, working on our northern Appalachian now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Weans will be ready. The next time. Will be I, can't, ready. I can't do it. I apologize. So just it's incredible. Send one to me now. But do, seriously, you're you know how to psych people up, man. You know how to, and you were just. Uh, it was awesome. Seriously, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for yeah, all of the support. For, for all of you, but seriously. You're you're big time repping us, and and you don't realize how much that means. Is we we text about you more than we text about our actual days we're having. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, we actually just received one less than an hour ago from um from uh what's his name again? Uh, I'm sorry, I just have his email. At Rogue Two, uh, it's yeah. At Rogue Two, right? Uh, I'm yeah, full, yeah. The full uh, name, but he we have a full name on there too. Yeah, Rogue Squad Two. Um, he reached out, and Jerry actually hasn't listened to this one yet, so I'm going to play it for us live, and um, we're going to commentate on his response as well. It's, uh, it's a very sweet message, so here we go. Hey, Bomb Badcast. This is Chris, a.k.a. Rogue Squad 2 on Twitter. I've been following Canon Junkie since I got on earlier this year, and I really enjoy your podcast this first round. I look forward to many more adventures to come and hear what you have to say about the Star Wars universe. I love the positivity and everything that you're talking about so far. Uh, Scotty Jero, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you, too, and I just started following you as well. So I uh, hope you guys have a great week, and look forward to listening to more thanks awesome fantastic chris thanks so much dude like ser- seriously I- i've noticed you following me and like commenting on my things and liking my thing and so like uh it-, it was just so cool to see someone who i've been following as well over the last year uh, uh just jump onto the podcast and thank you so much for the kind words man that's seriously we can't thank you enough and, and and this is a message to anyone. If you want to have your voice heard in this podcast and have people start to recognize you in the community, please reach out. I'll post it. We will we will 100% give you shout-outs because this means just as much to us as it probably would to you at some point. And um, we're very thankful that, that you reached out. Um, and, and trust me, there, there will be many more of these to come. And you might even be interviewed in the next show. We don't know. We'll figure this out. We we'll got see. this. We'll it's see going what's on. going on. Um, this, is, this is a Star Wars podcast of the people, Scott. Yes, yes. For the people, by the people, and and a lot of people really okay. mention that. So so <laughs> funny, you you know you're so good at transitions, Jerry. God bless you. Well, you he, know, Thank we you. much to our surprise, I was we had actually we are now on Apple Podcasts. Big deal. Uh, Jerry and I are both Apple users, and um, we oh, do it was all so our podcasts. Surreal. So surreal. So like, I have been using I've I been using Apple Podcasts since like uh, 2016 for yes. For my I like comedy, bang bang, and other podcasts, but like. To have it now be me on it, it, uh, it uh, I can't even talk. It's got well, me so to excited. To see Don Boring's uh, beautiful artwork and logo he yep. created for us on Apple Podcasts. It's so cool. Was amazing. So again, cool. Thank you, Star Wars Dexterous. You are you are the man, and it, it was just so cool to so, see you on there. So to have that happen, we yes. started to end up recognizing something. I'm a... Uh, I was looking at our podcast on Apple Music right when it got posted, and, uh, and I checked it about a day later. And much to our surprise, I had th- there's like three reviews on there right now, but there's two written reviews, and I ne- I'm going to read through them because I, I did not expect this at all. We did not ask anyone to do a review on us. I, I am literally, I was like, this is so cool. I shared it with my girlfriend and shared it with my mom. Like, look at that. This is so awesome. So we got one that's titled Great Start with Five Stars, and it's from someone called Obi-Wan Cass. Um, I actually don't know the, who that is. If it's if it is you listening, Obi Wan Cast, reach out and message us. Um, yeah, it says, thank these, you for listening. Totally, thank you. It says these guys have a fun energy that celebrates the saga while having a lot of fun and laughs along the way. Looking forward to many more episodes of laughs. So I don't. I, I I'm so glad you enjoyed how much we laughed and enjoyed ourselves. This is this is what this is for. Um, that was very sweet. That was a very sweet message. Um, yes, and we got. Well, hopefully, we make you laugh more. Exactly. Episodes. Exactly. You know. Maybe, hopefully, you don't fall asleep. But you no, know. no. And if um, you, you know, if if we want, need to get into ASMR, then we will. So, this is going to be the best uh, review. It's going to. Um, this is a review from Bomb Pimperfoot. Bomb bad. Bomb bad. Bomb 
Wisa, Wisa on a bongo. Wisa, go to sleepy now. <laughs> oh, you see the guy's bomb bag. Oh, this is getting. No, I'm just. Yeah, I think I'm getting, getting little, weird. I, I'm, I'm getting I got a little, a little, little too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, was, uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we got another uh, another um, review from someone called Pimberfoot. You know what? I know this person really well. We follow each other on Instagram for like a year or so now. Um, we go back and forth each other on Twitter, and even in our private messages, we discuss things. And this is my favorite title so far: "By Fans for Fans." That is the title of it, Jerry. Yes. And um, I'll read it to y'all real quick. It says, "Super great chemistry between these two fans of a most beloved series. They speak openly and honestly about all things Star Wars and the galaxy." of content that surrounds the franchise. While the future is always in motion, I see this podcast as being a highly successful show that will continue to deliver an amazing content for all fans of the Force. That was awesome! Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, thank you so much for that, too. I mean, this is all just from people reaching out and showing the love, and, and thank you for everyone doing this. And uh, and um, I, I'm just excited. Jerry, what do you think of all this, man? It, it's so surreal. I, I think that you guys really know how to stroke our egos because mm-hmm. this is just like, oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> the best thing about this <laughs> is... My head is, fit in my headphones. Exactly. We had to, we had so to get big. we had to get bigger size headphones. Yeah. It's such a like shame. Five uh, million pets on the background. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Feels it's funny, great. You don't realize how much this gets through our week. And the funniest part about this is every day, every day that we were like, we're like okay, we'll record Sunday. Every day since then... Has been like, are you excited? I'm so excited. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Every day. And it's literally, I text you in the morning, good morning, Jerry. Having a good, hope you're having a good Friday or whatever. And he's like, hope you are too. I'm excited for Sunday. And then Saturday. <laughs> hey, Jerry, good morning, man. How you doing? Okay, I hope you're having a good Saturday. Hey, man, I'm doing great. I see you sa- Sunday. I mean, it's literally been nonstop hype. So we're so glad we're finally here doing this. And, yes. and to get on to a little bit more of the show, Jerry actually has an interesting fact for us about a beloved character. Jerry. Elaborate. Sure. Well, if we have to stop talking about our bromance of the ages, then I guess uh, we'll move on to the super bombad fact of the week. Uh, cue sound effect or whatever, I yeah. guess. Uh, yeah. Whatever to do. So yeah. um, <clears throat> just do my own. Uh, woo! Or something. Okay. We uh, never. <clears throat> So, what we want to do with this is we kind of want to give you random Jar Jar facts every week. Uh, since we are, you know, our namesake, uh, you know, George, or George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar uh, Abrams. <laughs> Jar Jar Jar. <laughs> um, gosh, that was a Freudian slip. Oh, getting, listen, well, now we're a psychology podcast. Um, uh, um, um, I, my favorite character is Jar Jar. Um, and uh, I, I just really uh, uh, thought he was he was funny. And uh, I did not realize... <laughs> Wait, I did not realize your George Lucas and, and Kermit the Frog were so close. They're so similar. Jeez. You know, it's they're literally Whoa. one. They're literally one uh, molecule away. Like lo- George Lucas is one molecule away from being like green and felt. <laughs> so, like, felt. Aren't, aren't um, we all? Aren't we yeah, all guys? Yeah. Can you imagine like Kermit the Frog with George Lucas hair, glasses, <laughs> and like that flannel, the jeep, <laughs> and like those. Oh, I want to see that now. Okay, okay. Oh, man. We have a podcast audience. If someone wants to like Photoshop and make that, go for it. By all means, the happiest man in the world. By all means, oh, um, jo- George amazing. Kermit the Frog, uh, <laughs> George Kermit the Lucas. <laughs> all right. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the bomb bad fact of the week. Oh my God! Is a random Jar Jar fact, and, and I, we're, we're going to try to make it entertaining for you guys, maybe a bit educational. Uh, but today, <clears throat> here is. The Jar Jar fact of the week. Did you know Jar Jar's tongue is more than half his height? Oh my god. That is Jerry, intensely Jerry. upsetting. <laughs> uh, we we have made a, a promise to each other that we wouldn't tell each other the fact. So Jerry's <laughs> this week and I'm next week and I don't know how I'm going to top that. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good stuff. Now, I'm, I'm taking this. I, I, I researched this um, on Wikipedia, you know, so, you know, it, it's it's Wikipedia is like Wikipedia. Anyone could put go on there and put information yeah. on there. So, you know, you're getting the best information. That on. is hilarious. This is a little Michael Scott reference for you. Uh, <laughs> but I, I checked it out. This is, I believe, canon for the most part. But I got it from an article from Screen Rant. 
That is hilarious. Because who doesn't love to rant what about is it, things in the screen? Half of his body. Okay. Yeah. It, it is. Uh, his tongue is more than half of his height. Jesus. Just a little bit of this of these paragraphs here. Um, uh, another distinctive trait of the Gungans is their long, agile tongues that seem to have minds of their own. And this is that. That's basically. <laughs> it took that almost from word for word from Wikipedia. Uh, but given that Gungans have an insatiable appetite for everything from shellfish to slimy bugs and to a dessert that takes four people to eat. <laughs> I think that's a reference from the Clone Wars. Yeah, it has to be. Because I've watched the Clone Wars so many times, but I can't. Really... <laughs> I don't know what the heck that it's means. Like, but, there's yeah. like a random episode where like some Gungans go to Chili's <laughs> and get like a molten lava cake. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Chili's. Oh, well, we, we still want bottomless tostada chips. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Bring, bring me some. Uh, I, I, I don't um, know if it's the temperature in Louisiana, right? It's like 100 degrees. I don't know if it's the temperature, but, but you were, you've you got me feeling loopy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it only gets better. Hold on, real quick. Uh, it's it's a good thing they have one meter long tongues over three feet to help grab any and all food in their vicinity. It's made more impressive when you consider that uh, Star Wars databank lists Jar Jar's height as 1.96 meters, almost six and a half feet tall. So his tongue is more than half his height. So it's like three feet of six and a half feet. That's incredible. Is, wow. Yeah, that's that's like that way overshadows the height of my daughter. That <laughs> my my little my little peanut. And oh. uh, well, I guess that's not that impressive because she's pretty short like me. So I don't, <laughs> you guys can't tell. I don't know if you can tell how tall I am by listening, but it's not tall. Uh, but Jerry, anyway, so Jerry, me, how, Scott, is, how does that sit with you? Jerry's <laughs> a little bit o- over the size of an Ewok. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you've, you've seen me in real life. Jerry so, looks know. a lot like Wicket, and I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's the beard. It's the beard. It's the <laughs> the big soulful dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Unblinking unless you watch the the, the Blu-rays. Which the spe- I- the spe- uh, okay, um, that blew me away. Um, it's funny because because I, that's a fact I did not expect to come out of your mouth. Uh, neither <laughs> I Jar- was so. Uh, either Jar Jar's mouth, either. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's so funny because that would be something I don't know if I would ever have an answer to. But funny enough, b- bringing it in, Jerry, we got some questions we also need to answer. You know? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, let's reach at him, let's reach for him with our three foot long tongues. All right, let's go. Just all kidding. Right. Mine would be like two let's, feet. Let's like cue the, the Yoshi noise. <laughs> the whatever the noise. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we got a couple of questions, bud. I'm, I have about three of them, and uh, some are kind of funny. I'm, I'll read them to you. Uh, one of them says, it's from Darth Hurricane, says, Will Jar Jar ever be seen again in live-action Star Wars? Will Jar Jar ever be seen again? And then someone comments, as as one in the force responded, Darth Jar Jar? Question mark. <laughs> so, so um, Jerry, what do you think? Do you think we will ever see Jar Jar again in a live-action? Live action. Scotty, I've got to tell you. I'm I'm ready for the day that Lucasfilm gets to the point where they're not afraid to put a Gungan in a live oh, action show. Totally. To, because my thing is, it, look, it exists. Yep. It's in the universe. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think, I, honestly, you know, and you can disagree with me. I don't think the Gungans are the worst thing. Like I not at all came out, and most of the people, uh, I I still see comments. It's it's luck. Hope luckily it's it's less now that that you know. Uh, Ahmed came out with his uh, totally talk about you know suicide and all that, but but um, it, it it you see people all the time like calling for the genocide of the gung. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Horrifying. It's unbelievable. Uh, stop it because that's not funny anymore. It, it's it's not original if you make Jar Jar death jokes. It's literally twenty years old. You are making a joke that was from twenty years ago. Like it's yeah. just it's pretty lame. Like we it really still, is. We still love you, but just yeah. especially don't give that hate to Ahmed. But I tell you what, I would love for them to give Ahmed like some love. I know he got a lot of love during the Clone Wars and Kate. Yep. The first episode or couple episodes he was in, uh, I believe, was uh, like some other voice actor. And uh, but they they had him come back into the Clone Wars. And I would love for them like unless it doesn't even have to be Jar Jar. But let's get like some like Gungans just thrown. Oh, in. 
totally. I loved what I loved about Solo was that they had a lot of the like legacy or like legacy a- aliens. They had a lot of the like aliens from you know like they had a Rodian mm-hmm. and Twi'lex and all. all it was kinds. awesome. And and, I, and I'm not calling. For, I don't want just more of the same. I just want like a mix. Like, give me a ton of new. You know, good mix of old. Funny you say that because um, were you? Did you see? No, you didn't see the the footage from the Mandalorian, did you? At Celebration, I uh, you saw that one thing. You did see that. Officially, one thing. no. I, I I might have seen something that I probably shouldn't have, but it was not good enough. And yeah, I really I just watched like a minute and I was like, ah, this is this is well, cool. I want to watch it for myself. Yeah, and we have D twenty three in August, which we'll probably get something. Right. But, um, I really think John Favreau would go as far as to doing it, and uh, and in all seriousness, I don't think there's going to be a Darth Jar Jar, but I will. No. I 100 percent agree. We will see a live action Gungan. I really think, even if it's background, even if it's like two seconds, I think we'll see it. Uh, Jar Jar live action can neither confirm or deny it, but um, he's well, gonna the, be he's gonna be go. Palpatine and. <laughs> Oh, that's how it is. That's what it, you, it's like the robot chicken sketch where like Palpatine yep. calls him to yep. apologize, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you uh, did that to Misa," and then he like <laughs> hangs up the phone, and is like Mwahaha, or something, you know, because he was. <laughs> Um, um, I, I think that's a hilarious, uh, like theory to go. It's on. so well written. I mm. love lo- it's well thought out, but it's yeah. It's all fun and games, you know, and I understand oh, yeah. that. Yeah, um, that's what this is all about. Totally, totally. And we got um, we got two more questions um on here. We got one from Shannon Gates, which I've actually had personal Skype conversations with um when, when Patrick Covey and I had our little spot uh, podcast event. Um, well, um, this question's actually pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think about this that often. Some of y'all might, um, but I, I would love to answer it. So it says, in either Mandalorian or their own solo, hashtag makes solo to happen film. Yes. Who would you cast as Luke and Leia? My pick for Luke Skywalker, Sebastian Stan. And perhaps Haley Seinfeld or Leia f- for Leia or Millie Bobby Brown. Um, thank you, Shannon, for reaching out. Um, my pick. Now, this is just depends. I've seen the Sebastian Stan stuff with Luke, and I've heard it's kind of a morph photo. It's not really true to Sebastian Stan's look. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't really know. I It's hard for me to think about this, but... Um, for Leia, Millie Bobby Brown would be great, but it has to be way younger. Like, it has to be like a, even, and Millie Bobby Brown's at least 14 or 13, but it would have to be, to me, it would have to be a 10 year old little girl. Like, because there would, because Leia's only 19 in A New Hope. That's it. Like, there's a lot of gap there, but I think it could be done. Um, what do you think, Jerry? Well, you know, I, gosh, I love the thought of Sebastian Stan. Me too. Um, but. That age gap is is massive. It is. Grand Canyon. I mean, that was if they are twins, then Padme was in labor for like at least <laughs> 15 years. Um, so that was awkward. <laughs> like, you know, Sebastian. Wow. Stanley, I didn't think I, about it that way. I didn't I think mean, about it from even, the twin perspective. Even That's with true. Even with, you know, like and I mean, you could do like a flash forward or something. Look, but I'm, just, you know, if it was. Sebastian Stan, I would see him more like if you put a beard on him and kind of like yeah. hair like Luke and did him like for like the Mandalorian. Era. Yeah, yeah. That would be fantastic. I'd love to see him in there. But I just feel like that, that that's awesome. And I'm trying to remember how – Haley Steinfeld, how – she's a little older than Millie Bobby Brown. I believe so. Now is like a perfect like young – Let me see. I'll look at that. I, I want to see Millie Bobby Brown. I still haven't seen Godzilla I yeah. see uh, Millie Bobby Brown in more than just Stranger Things, even though she is a revelation in Stranger Things. I'm a. Uh, if oh, you, she's only 22. Is That's she? not bad. Yeah. No, well, yeah. I mean that means she can play younger, but she can also skew older too. Exactly. Exactly. That's not. I mean, that's not a bad choice. I, I think it's a pretty good one. That would be good. Um, yeah. Now, this is one other question that I I think about frequently. Um, Jerry, who do you think is the most Overrated or underrated character in Star Wars. Um, that's from Ion Cannon, which is the most okay. clever name. Ion Cannon. It's it is I as an eyeball on Cannon, but it's also, but it's also yeah. Ion Cannon. Ion Cannon from the last. I, you, I, get I, it? you get no, it. I don't. I, I do. I actually. I get it. I actually get it. I get it. Yeah. It, I get Q, it. Q Captain America. You know, as a, I understood that reference. I, I understood that reference. 
I understood. I understood that. That's, that's my go-to gif on, a, that's on the any best joke. One. That's the I best love it. one. Um, okay, this, so is, this is now a Marvel podcast. Yes. Uh, um, <clears throat> Gosh. Okay, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Um, no, no. Um, I wanted to ask you what was what is your most overrated character? I got mine already in the oh, bag, already. Instantly know it. This is most overrated character. This is hard for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you first sent me this question, I was like, I thought you meant what's the most overrated, underrated character? And I was that's like, what I thought too. On. <laughs> I'm like, what, what? What could you mean? It was like, oh, overrated or underrated character? Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I'm probably going to, uh, I'm probably going to lean towards the underrated character just because I'm forever the optimist. Yes. The glass is half full and it's usually full of lemonade, not poop for me. Oh, see, um, I thought you meant your glasses were half on, like you couldn't read this. Oh, right. Well, you know, I'm not that old, so, um, we're good. You know, <laughs> I Jerry, what, the age just jokes. I guess Jerry, not. Jerry, what was, what was 1893 like? Was it fun? Well, it was great except for, you know, when you when you broke a wagon wheel and, <laughs> and you had to carry your Star Wars action figures into it. No, I'm just playing. Um, so, OK. Uh, no, again. Uh, OK. I, I think gosh, if I'm on the spot. Uh, on the spot. If I'm on the spot. Spontaneity. The most underrated character. No, no, you know what? I'm going to go overrated. Do it. And, Do it. Because uh, I need to be negative sometimes. I double dog dare you, Jerry. And I'm, you know what? I'm going to bring it on. It is, uh, I love this character. I think it's a great character. Sure. But I think the, all the, and. Uh-oh. Oh, Uh-oh. Man. Okay. Mace Windu. Oh, what's up? Mace Windu, Jerry, I love. I love. Controversial. I love him, but I, I'm going to tell you, it's not my thing to oh my come back. Oh, goodness. Jerry. Because. It's like I know, I know that I'm about this. Samuel Jackson, I know Samuel Jackson. Oh yeah, back and I'm not so bad. saying that I would be grumpy and all of a sudden join the fandom menace. Of back. <laughs> but it's but you know. <laughs> well, I'm like at, at some point I get why we brought Darth Maul back and stuff. Me too. It was for that, and I love that. I love the theories that, and George Lucas even confirmed, even though it's not official canon, canon. Yeah. That uh, Boba Fett survived the Sarlacc pit. Yes. I don't yes. hate Boba Fett, you know, like like some people do. Some people have a real hatred of Boba. Funny Fett. Funny you say that, Jerry. Um, Funny you say that. I, oh. I can. Let me add something into that if you don't mind. Okay, go for it. Go for Boba it. Boba Fett's the wanna... most. Boba Fett is the most overrated character in all of Star Wars. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Well, bye, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> it was we, nice having you. We picked you the listen. most, the two most popular. Like they're still alive characters. <laughs> We're like. Nope. They're garbage. They're overrated. No, uh, yeah. Burn them say- down. <laughs> So so do you do you absolutely loathe um No, not at all. Or is no, it just I, more my, like a I, my, look I get it. My favorite prequel character is Django Fett. Hands okay. down. I love Django Fett. I played Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Literally I, I literally play it still to this day. Oh, I played it last month. I love awesome. that game. Love it. And so and good. I don't actually do. I love Boba Fett's story. I think he's a great character. I read the Boba Fett books when I was growing up when Attack of the Clones came out. I like that character. But yeah. But for everything from, like, that first parade he ever was, like, showcased in back in 1978, like, he was he was the original, like, like you don't know who this guy is, but you're going to like him. And then, because he looked cool, everyone did. And that's fantastic. I mean, like, I respect the Kenner dolls that are made after him. I respect everything about his legacy. I really do. But for someone that has, I believe, like, maybe... Five minutes of screen time. This dude's like super hyped. Like he's a mar- <laughs> he is a marketing like icon. Like he is so right. memorable, and and I do love the character. But at the same time, he has been so hyped up. Now, if if it you know comes to be that that um the Mandalorian centers around him at some point, or I don't know how that whole episode, that whole show is going to work. But I would not be opposed, and he might actually end up getting off this list. But also, this is that was kind of a. My remark was kind of a shout out to the Resistance broadcast because I I I much as much as I believe in it I'm actually featured in their Hall of Fame <laughs> if you will for <laughs> calling for for calling Bullfett overrated but you know that's just me it it 
It's just how I feel. But uh, Jerry, it was real a quick. cheap entry into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it was. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Says the guy who is against a uh, 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 Mace Windu coming back. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm over exaggerating. Uh, well, well, I'm sorry, let, let me just say, yes, that I love Boba Fett. Yeah, I mean, me too. But but let's be let's be serious. Overrated. <laughs> the Sarlacc pit burps after it eats him. <laughs> It's so and George and Lucas. I'm also sorry, not sorry, but it's so George Lucas. Come, come on. Oh man. If you don't like the fart in the Phantom Menace, <laughs> I'm I'm good. I'm wondering if I should bring up the fart in Phantom. No, Menace. you know what? Every episode <laughs> it should be brought up. I really think that one of our episodes coming up in the near future is going to be called titled "That's So George Lucas," and we're going to yes. go through each moment in from canonically what is so George Lucas and the fart one 100% is in the burp from oh, the Sarlacc man. pit Ma- maybe we should maybe we should title it oh George <laughs> oh George okay so wait Jerry who's yes. your most underrated character underrated underrated okay well this is even harder for me because I, I feel like there's a lot of good characters that are in and it's hard because are we talking film characters or just characters in general um, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna just pick out of the, the good. atmosphere that is Star Wars character. Do it mainly because I want to see things from this character, and and you you probably saw me do a tweet about it a few months back. Gosh dang it! I I want more uh, uh, Professor Huang. Oh, it, it's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. Deep cut, right? I'm bleeding everywhere. That's the deepest cut I've ever had. <laughs> Bring it up, yeah. Scott needs stitches. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who may not be as well versed, and I don't mean wow. to explain, but just just if you haven't watched the Clone Wars, Professor Hugh Wang is uh, the character voiced by uh, uh, none other than um, um, oh my gosh, uh, the Eleventh Doctor himself. I'm trying to remember his. I, I'm brain fart. Um, <laughs> And fart from the Phantom Menace. Uh, <laughs> Give me, I'll, I'll look it up. Oh, what is his name? Um, I keep thinking of uh, Matt, uh, uh, who who is rumored in. Uh, uh, man, okay, uh, I'm I'm disappointing all the Whovians out there. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's a character uh, who's voiced by one of the Doctors. Uh, from Doctor. Oh, David Tennant. David Tennant. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, can I have my nerd card back? Thank you. Yeah, uh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Thank you. All right. Hand it to the screen. Um, but uh, gosh, it's got a Star Trek logo it, on it. It's almost like imagine Harry Potter and Ollivander's one shop, but with yeah. Like, neighbors. Yeah. The magic and mysticism that comes along with that with like, mm-hmm. like a rip off from Harry Potter, but it just. It has that magical it does. feel. It's an epi- It's a series of episodes that you might overlook if if you're just kind of doing like a pick and choose through the Clone Wars. Watch these episodes. You will not be disappointed, especially the first one. I believe it's called The Gathering. Mm-hmm. A group of Padawans going to get their lightsaber crystals from the caves on Ilum. And so cool. Wang, I, actually, he's in the second episode. I forget exactly what it's called. I think maybe a test of strength or something. Uh, but the second episode, Hugh Wang comes in, and he is basically a thousand-year-old droid. Who's so cool. So many generations of Jedi build their lightsabers. That's and awesome. I wanted to see so much more from him. They, I kept like thinking we're going to see so much crazy stuff, and he does some great. He has some great interactions and some great thing uh, things that he does in the episodes. But I give me more, Professor Hugh. And, Do it and Do that. It. That is my soapbox for, you know. That's a, awesome. Saying a Star Wars story. How specific. On Disney Plus. <laughs> there we go. Hey, Jerry, I completely understand that 100%. And, and uh, that, that is a character that I, that you had to refresh me on. Now I do completely remember it. He has a very iconic uh, face. And he does look like he would be from, like, uh, like the Natural Republic days. He looks very old. Um, well, and he looks like that, that droid in Force Awakens from Mod yep. Castle. Yep. Which is also a, a droid from that era. Yes, exactly. But Scotty, uh, I want to know: have, have you given your oh, character? Oh, here's mine, 100. Let me have it, buddy. I, like I told you, I love the Thrawn novels, and I love the character Thrawn. You could hear that uh, in the um, in the course on uh, Radio Underground. Um, oh yes, go check too. them out, guys. Seriously, it's so good. Um, my most underrated character to me is Eli Vanto from the first Thrawn novel. Oh, uh, he was a character that's located more on the outer rim and he has kind of aspired to be nothing his entire life and then he ends up meeting Thrawn and Thrawn the best part about Thrawn is Thrawn ends up making him his second in command and like Eli Snow I'm he's like literally I'm supposed to be like a a a actual like 
a transporter. Like, I'm supposed to be the ones that, like, fly ships. So this is not what I'm supposed to do. And Thrawn takes him under his wing, and he teaches him, mar- like, military art and, and martial arts and everything. And, like, it's it's such a cool character. And, and that's the only Star Wars character that I've been, like, really, like, leaning over, like, I want more of this dude. And he's got, yeah. a, he's got kind of a country accent. He's a very, if you listen to the audiobooks, he has a country yes. accent. Um, oh, I love it. Mark Thompson's a, an incredible. Um, but not a but, Northern Appalachian accent. No, not Northern Appalachian or Southern Louisiana. No. Um, yes, yes. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will 100% say that that Eli Vanto is my favorite, and he is actually making a comeback 100% in the next Thrawn yes. book. Uh, Thrawn, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, uh, uh, it's Thrawn Treason. Treason. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it's that's so treason. Awesome. Then, yeah. then, um, ooh, the Palp Boys. Jerry. Oh, yeah, Palp Uncle Palps, Palps is coming Uncle, out. Uncle pa- hey, stay tuned for Uncle Palps. Um, <laughs> no, um, so, real quick, I gotta interject here, Jerry. Um, we are about to bring on our guest of the week. We yeah. have a very special guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself. We're going to run down some news, and we're getting to our main discussion. All right. Jerry, are you ready? I am ready, sir. I'm ready All to righty. hit the jump. All right. Excellent. All righty, y'all. Be on the lookout for episode one, part two, coming at you shortly, featuring our special guest, Bill Sheehy. <laughs> Oh, boy. 